you're feeling tired or getting close to burnout, whether it's in any of those areas, physically, spiritually, mentally, or emotionally, those cues are firing off. So just trust yourself and you'll find that when you can bring that softness into the way that you're feeling, you'll stop fighting it. You'll stop battling yourself and you can almost align with the way you're feeling and still move through your day and do some of the things you need to do, but but you bring that space with you. And it's so much more enjoyable to go at life that way. I'm doing the best I can. And that energy can radically shift the outcome of your day, the outcome of whatever it is you're trying to do and how tired you end up continuing to feel in the days that follow. It is a chilly, rainy day outside. And so we have a little guest today. Little Bentley has come to cuddle up for our chat. I think because it's so chilly in the house, he just wants to cuddle. And I am soaking it up. <laughs> Hopefully, as I continue to talk, he won't jump down. Sometimes I feel like he gets confused. He's always been this way, actually. When I'm filming, it's almost like he can't figure out who I'm talking to very fair. And eventually he's like, you're a weird lady. I'm going away. <laughs> and he goes and lays down somewhere else. Today I am drinking an oat milk coffee with some cinnamon on top. It's hot. It's warm. It feels so nice in my hands right now. Because like I said, rainy and chilly and just generally very much April showers kind of day outside. I'm having the kind of day where I feel really low energy, really tired. My gut feels off. And everything I set out to do today just seems like a big giant no. <laughs> the really nice thing about my podcast is just the community that we have built here feels so warm and so comforting that I feel like I can come and sit and chat about truly anything and just come as raw and as real as I'm feeling. And I love that. And today that mixed with how I'm feeling has created our chat today about what to do or how to persevere when you are really tired, when you don't have the energy to do something that you've set out to do, whether it's work, whether it's a goal that you're working on, whether you're losing momentum or motivation on something that you set forth for 2024, now that we're a quarter of the year in, actually further than a quarter of the year in, you get the drill. When it comes to finding a meal kit that actually works well for you, it's nice to have one that gives you options for everyone that you might be living with, everyone in your household, or even yourself if you like to have variety. With Marley Spoon, you can choose from over a hundred delicious recipes every single week, and they're always changing them up. Head to marleyspoon.com slash offer slash talk and use the code talk and you can get up to 25 free meals. That's right, up to 25 free meals with Marley Spoon. So just one last time, that's marleyspoon.com com backslash offer backslash talk for up to 25 free meals when i'm feeling stuck when i'm feeling blocked by specifically the way that i'm feeling i find journaling to be super helpful and it's such an easy process all i do is sit down and just write exactly how i'm feeling i don't filter myself i don't try to be profound or poetic by any means i just write even if i make mistakes i keep going i keep going i let it all out and then I take a step back, take a sip, take a breath, whatever, and read it back over. And as I'm reading it back over, one, I'm always really shocked about as you're saying or feeling or thinking or writing the words, you're so in them that you don't fully see the bigger picture of what you're really feeling or writing or saying. So reading it back, it's like suddenly you can see through the lines or in between the lines a little bit. And also I like to do this practice almost as if I'm like a mother to a daughter that wrote those words or a friend to a friend that may have written those words or come to me with that issue or that feeling. What would I say? What would I tell them? What would my advice be? And then I'm able to give myself that piece of advice or even write it as if I'm giving it to someone else. And then again, take a step back, read it back. And then it's it's like, oh yeah, it's right there in front of you. All Everything that we could possibly ever want to know or need to know or just need to hear is already within us. Sometimes we just need to reframe our brains to get there. And specifically when you're feeling really tired or you feel like you might be getting burnt out or getting close to a state of burnout or... You just are losing momentum or motivation. I feel like the most important question to 
really sit and feel with yourself is exactly what kind of tired you are. So for example, maybe you feel physically tired and this one I think is the easiest for us to catch because it is so physical. Our bodies feel depleted, our muscles hurt or we ache or we just feel a lack of energy in our bodies. Maybe our eyes feel heavy or our head feels heavy and it's just really hard to find that energy to get up and go and do things. Maybe even as you're moving through your day or getting in the car or if you exercise or whatever, you just feel it in your body. The other kinds of tired though can be a little harder to spot. One being if you feel mentally tired, which to me, the way that that manifests a lot of the time is like my brain just shuts down. It doesn't want to think, it doesn't want to problem solve, it doesn't want to intellectualize it just can't it's like I just want to doom scroll or watch like random tv or tv that doesn't have a whole lot of depth to it like a baking show or reality tv or whatever it is I don't want to have conversations I don't want to think about life I don't want to think about anything of course there's also emotionally tired which Again, the way that that manifests for me is usually after feeling a lot of emotions or feeling a lot of heavy emotions, or it can also come from suppressing a lot of emotions. It's this, it can manifest in so many different ways, but sometimes it's like agitation or you just emotionally completely shut down. You're not really feeling anything. You're just kind of going through the motions. You're not really feeling joy or happiness, but you're also not really feeling low energy or low emotion either. You're kind of monotone. You're somewhere in the middle. And it's just because there's been either so much emotion or it's all been pushed down so far that you're emotionally depleted. You don't have it in you to express what you're feeling. And then there's spiritually tired, which to me, again, I feel it can manifest as, I find it gets to a very big, almost existential level where if there's too much going on, whether it's out there in the world, or if I'm just thinking too deeply about why we exist or what's the reason, what's the point, or I think as well, if we get too far into the logical, if we get too far into the practical, where there's maybe just so much on your to-do list or so much that's been filling your calendar or filling your agenda that have been mandatory necessities, but not necessarily play. They're not things that open up your soul or open up your mind or open up your heart. And they're just things you have to get by and have to get done that you're not necessarily enjoying or losing yourself in. I think that's where spiritual tiredness can come from too, is it's like, when was the last time you really felt connected to your being, to your deeper sense, to who you are in your essence? So again, that can manifest in so many different ways. But for me, I just find I get really either spiritually locked down where I stop seeing the magic of the world or I stop feeling it or I stop wanting to even think about it. I get really cynical sometimes and start to only see like the bad in the world and the bad in people. And that can also just be like a really big reflection too of what's going on in ourselves because then you only maybe start to see the bad in yourself for all of the things that you don't do great or, you know, you, you get what I'm saying. So if you want to figure out what kind of tired you are, I mean, you could literally do it right now if you wanted to. You could pause this talk, pause everything you're doing, unless you're driving, please keep driving, but take a deep breath, maybe even two or three, and just feel into your body. Just take some space, take some time, take some quietness, and just notice. Because if you tune into yourself and you tune into that space, that time, that openness, your intuition will start to guide you towards what you're feeling or what you're experiencing and what kind of tired you feel. So give that a go because it's really important information to know what kind of tired you are in order to equip yourself with the right tools to either work through it or work with it. Once you know what kind of tired you are, then it's important to take a look at what you've set out to do, whether it's usually it's for the day, right? Like you're just having one of those days and your calendar was full or you filled out your to-do list the day before or whatever. And, or you just have your general routine that is something you have to do every single Wednesday or something along those lines. Like you have to drop off your kids or you have to go to your job or you have to do X, Y, and Z because that's just what you do on Wednesdays as an example. So take a look at what's on the docket and discern what is the highest priority. This 
can require an actual skill. It, I'm still working on the skill of prioritizing what is truly the most important because everything in one sense or another is important, especially if it's made it on your list, if it's made it on your agenda, if it's made it on your to do for the day, then odds are it's important in one aspect or another. So two areas to focus on. The first is usually the due date. Like, is there a date that this thing needs to get done by? So this is more so for like projects, goals, or something you might be working on. Uh, also, this makes sense for work as well. Like, do you normally have to go to work on a Wednesday? And if the answer is yes, then of course, you know, that's a priority. But the second part to think about when you're prioritizing is impact and what's going to have the greatest impact in one way or another in a positive direction or a negative direction based on the bigger picture. This one is a little bit more nuanced and it requires you to be, again, it requires you to discern because maybe you really do need a mental health day off of work or maybe you really do need to just take a look at your calendar and go, you know what? I can do the bit of work that I had scheduled today, tomorrow, or two days from now, and I'll still be right on track. Like you have to be able to be creative, but you also have to be honest with yourself because I think we know in our gut of guts, when we are making decisions that are coming from a, a place of like health and balance and intuition versus coming from a place of procrastination or you know, just kind of letting ourselves off the hook. The, the difference is though, because sometimes, you know, our, our mind can play tricks on us. And even if we actually really, really, really could use this day off of work or really use just a rest day or a mental health day or whatever it is, sometimes we feel so much guilt about it that we don't take it. The issue with that is that again, that can compound and compound to a point where you do actually crash burnout your health goes awry, like you start feeling really sick and you you just completely throw yourself off in a much worse way than had you have just taken that day. Take a look though at how many times you do this because that's a pretty good indicator of whether or not it's worth doing. So if you are sitting there being like, okay, I feel exhausted. I don't wanna do what I said I was gonna do today and I have to figure out if I'm going to call off work or if I'm going to move around my schedule and put all of these things onto another day, look at the calendar, look at the last, like, let's say three weeks and see, have you done this already in the last three weeks? If the answer is yes. How many times? And it's not to bring a sense of judgment towards yourself. It's again, really important information. It's really crucial information because if this is like the fifth time you've done this in three weeks, then there's something bigger going on there. It could be that there's something bigger going on in terms of your mental health, your physical health, or anything of that matter. Maybe you're going through a really rough time, or it could also branch into maybe the thing, especially if it's like a goal or a project that you're working on. Maybe you're not as passionate about it as you thought, or maybe, maybe you are very passionate about it, but you've lost your drive, you've lost your motivation, you've lost your inspiration, you've forgotten your reason why. And so instead, it just kind of feels like another thing you have to get done and you're not seeing that bigger picture anymore of that goal or of that project and why you originally set out to do it. Use your own discretion to figure out if there's a way that you can get creative and align your day with where you're at because you've already checked in hopefully at this point to know exactly where you're at. And then if you can take a look at your schedule and take a look at your to-do list and rework it in a way that's creative, that it's like you're not fully throwing caution to the wind unless you truly genuinely deeply need a no to-do list day, a no schedule day. I'm calling off of everything. I need to just climb into bed and rest like that sometimes actually is called for, but you can also get creative and find ways to, okay, there are three things that are very, very high priority that, that either have a due date coming up or are gonna make a significant positive impact on my life if I just get them done. So I'm going to do those things, but all of this other stuff, all of these other ambitious goals that I put on my list or my schedule today because I thought it would be the right day for that and I could get a little bit ahead or it would feel really good to do, I'm actually not gonna do those things because they, they either don't have a due date or they're not gonna actually have the positive impact I really need them to. And again, keep in mind when you're making those decisions 
that taking a step back today could actually help you take further steps forward in the following days versus if you push yourself to still do everything on your list and everything on your schedule, even the things that aren't necessarily priority, that actually could create that burnout that would cause you to fully derail and end up having to take days or just completely falling off whatever momentum you have gained to this point. Or if you've been feeling really good or you are, let's say, like on a good wave with your routine or your habits, just taking one day off and then picking it right back up tomorrow is so much better than pushing and pushing and pushing yourself and then completely unraveling, falling apart and then stopping altogether. When it comes to finding a meal kit that actually works well for you, it's nice to have one that gives you options for everyone that you might be living with, everyone in your household, or even yourself if you like to have variety. So that's why I want to tell you guys about Marley Spoon. They sponsored today's podcast and they are an amazing meal kit that you just can't beat. With Marley Spoon, you can choose from over a hundred delicious recipes every single week and they're always changing them up. So if you're someone that likes gnocchi or if you're in the mood for a little bit more pasta, then you can do that but then the following week maybe you want to try their vegan burrito bowl or I saw that they just uploaded for this week a flourless chocolate cake yes please I personally love the customization of it the ability to go in and be like okay like I need a couple vegan recipes but then I also have an omnivore in my house that wants a couple meat recipes and it's also just the convenience of it too like it's nice to just save yourself some time make your life a little bit easier and give yourself back that energy and time that you might be spending on that meal planning or meal prepping. And they also do have an in-house registered dietitian as well that's assessing every recipe to make sure that, you know, it's filling all of our needs in terms of the things that our bodies need on the day to day. So if you want to experience the most personalized meal kit, then check out Marley Spoon. Head to marleyspoon.com slash offer slash talk and use the code talk and you can get up to 25 free meals. That's right, up to 25 free meals with Marley Spoon. So just one last time that's marleyspoon.com backslash offer backslash talk for up to 25 free meals and make sure you use the promo code talk so they know it was my show that sent you the next piece of advice that i gave myself is to remind yourself why what for I kind of just touched on this, but let's pick it apart a little bit. Maybe you have a vision board. If you don't, highly recommend making one this year. I actually made a physical one for the first time in so long. And I resource this board so much on days like today. Days where I just either feel really low energy or just don't feel like it. But also days where I'm feeling really down on myself and really insecure or perhaps, you know, sometimes our shadow cells kind of pop out when we're least expecting it. You stumble across a person or a platform that just makes you feel kind of crappy and you're like, wow, look at how successful they are and how different this person is from me. And just the way our brain works, we start to contrast and compare ourselves even though what we have is amazing. It's like comparison is the quickest thief of joy or whatever that quote is. My vision board is like, my grounding base i'm looking at it right now because i hung it up on the wall in my office for that reason so that when i am working or when i am feeling down about myself or when i'm lower energy or if i just need a moment because my office is kind of like my me space in my house so i can come in here and i can shut the door i can take a couple deep breaths and just look at my vision board and remind myself what i'm doing this all for like what the hard days are for what the the days where you're tired and you're just pouring yourself into your life is for now if you don't have a vision board and you don't feel like creating one maybe you've written down your goals somewhere go look at them again go remind yourself what your goals were for this year what your goals were for the next few years or for this chapter of your life just anything at all that can give you some semblance of the progress you've already made and that can remind you what you are driving towards in this life. I know that it's not necessarily about the destination. It's so much more about the way that we're living our lives and the day to day and the little nitty gritties in between. However, sometimes when we're on that drive, let's use the metaphor and the road is super bumpy and it starts raining and there's no coffee shops to stop at and it's just a general cold eerie gross drive and you're tired sometimes reminding yourself where the destination is that you're headed to and that if you just keep driving you'll be that much closer to getting to i don't know a 
the first thing that popped into my head is like somewhere you can literally drive from where I live is to Florida. It's a long ass drive, but you could do it. But if you stopped every time it got cold or gross or rainy or you got tired, it would take you so much longer to get to sunny, pretty Florida or to the ocean versus, okay, you know what? I know it's raining. I know I'm tired. I know it's crappy. But if I just keep driving a couple more hours, I'm that many hours closer to getting to my sunny destination. Take a look forwards and take a look backwards. Remind yourself of the destination, the goal, the reason why, the what, what you are creating with your life, that all of these smaller tasks or these smaller routines or these smaller habits feed into. And then two, take a look backwards. Take a look at the progress you've already made. Take a look at the work and the change and the transformation you have already gathered up into this point. Even if this is a new goal or a new project that you've taken on, even just take a look back five years ago, 10 years ago, would you have been equipped to take on this project? Would you, were you at the right place for that? No, probably not. So again, it just kind of reminds you like, wow, I've come so far in life and it's just a bad day. It's not a bad life. I've been throwing so many cliches into this podcast, but it's so true. It's just a rough day. It's just a tired day. It's not a tiring life. It's still a beautiful life. There's still lots that I'm creating here. And even if again, I take my foot off the gas a little bit, it doesn't mean I'm fully stopping the car. I can slow down a little bit today and align with how I'm feeling today, but it's so crucial. And I think it's such a burst of energy that we can source from this place that doesn't necessarily exist. It's very in between. It's very metaphysical, if you will. When we remind ourselves the lives that we're creating, when we see that vision, when we remind ourselves of that end result that we are heading towards, it can gas up the car a little bit more, especially on those tough days. Now, speaking of gassing up the car and gassing up some energy for yourself that you might not currently be feeling, is there a way that you can regain motivation and inspiration? Like what are your go-to quick sources for that? A little personal story time is I really fell off of vlogging for a really long time, which is a very key aspect of what I do for a living. And I could probably psychoanalyze the reasons why and list them out for you, but it's not really important to this conversation. What changed for me recently though, is I spent a day and despite the discomfort, because comparison can be the quickest thief of joy. And I just by nature tend to avoid the pockets of content creation online that I fall into. But because of that, I think I avoided so much for so long that I had no idea what people were really creating out there, what people were really sharing out there. And I got really far into my own head about thinking like, oh, my life's kind of boring. Like no one really cares to know or see or whatever. And so I spent a day where I was feeling generally pretty low and just really wanted to find that motivation and that inspiration. And I watched so many vlogs, so many random vlogs. I would just type something into the search engine. I would be like, I don't know, show me a Sunday routine, show me a week in the life, show me spring cleaning. And so many random vlogs were popping up and I was just watching, I watched some that had tons and tons of views and tons of subscribers down to some that were just new creators. And it was so, so motivating in a, very, I don't know how to describe it. I was just really glad I did it because it reignited that passion for me. It reminded me like, this is such a fun thing to do. It's supposed to be fun. And it also gassed up my tank because it reminded me like uh, sometimes just surrounding yourself with the type of energy that you need for yourself can be so helpful. And if you can't do that with people in person. I mean, obviously the people we spend the most time, the most time with have the greatest effect on our energy. I don't, I don't spend a whole lot of time with people that do what I do. And now that I've started a family, I don't see my friends as much as I would obviously love to. And we're all busy. I'm not going to like message my friends every time I'm like, well, I'm feeling low. Can you gas me up? <laughs> so just seeing a couple confident girls just share their life and not be like, oh, is this boring? Or why would anyone care if I share this today? They were just sharing for the sake of sharing. And it reminded me why I enjoy it. And it inspired me and it motivated me. And it was so interesting because it was like, I got to be the viewer for a little bit and how nice it is to be the viewer because it put me back into that seat where as I come back into the creator, where I'm creating content out of my life and I'm doing what I do for a living, 
I got reminded of how inspirational it can be for someone to just be themselves. And for no other reason other than just, you know, it's sometimes hearing someone's thoughts or sometimes just seeing how someone spends their day. It doesn't need to be deep, profound or leave somebody with this huge life lesson. Sometimes it's just nice to spend spend time in the energy and aura of other people, even online. And it's such a cool thing that we have the ability to do that online. So maybe you have some go to creators that you like to go watch that are really motivating to you that might be living a similar lifestyle to you or maybe not. I watched a lot of people that were living completely different lifestyles and just like having seeing or feeling their energy and their their mindset on life can just be so motivating. Spend 15 minutes and just fill back up your motivation and inspiration tank. Get on Pinterest and look up some physical representations of the goals that you're trying to manifest or again take a look at that vision board or make that vision board like what do you normally do that inspires you or that re-motivates you we can also talk about things completely unrelated to gaining that sense of motivation or inspiration in terms of like content or pictures or visualize visualizations or physical representations because sometimes it even is just as simple as getting some fresh air it can even just be as simple as moving your body especially the days where you don't as if you're not super physically tired but maybe you're mentally tired or spiritually tired or even emotionally tired actually especially emotionally tired if you go for a walk or a run or a bike ride or you lift some weights or you just move in some way the energy that that can give you the breakthroughs that that can give you maybe you get inspired or motivated anytime you paint anytime you read when you put on music and you dance, like just whatever it is for you and whatever it is, actually idea. <laughs> if you guys are feeling so inclined, I really love when we do create a really just great, warm resource in the comment section. So I am calling on you to please share and give me your input and share your input too with other people that might be watching or reading or listening today to write in the comment section, what do you like to do that refills your motivation or inspiration? And let that be a place that you can go scroll right now if you wanted to and get some ideas and try one or two of those things and see if it fills you back up. Because when we do get that motivation and inspiration, one, obviously from reminding ourselves why and what for, but also two, when you surround yourself with the types of things or energy or people or do the types of things that refresh your sense of energy and kind of break you out of the mold that you might be stuck in. You can feel like a brand new person. You can see life from a whole new perspective. And sometimes that's all it takes. And then we don't feel as tired anymore. It's like, again, we gain gas or energy from this source that is invisible. And so what can you do that motivates you or inspires you? Where can you go? What can you watch? What can you go look at that is going to reignite that feeling, that inspiration, that motivation, and that burst of like, oh wait, life is actually really fun and really beautiful and I'm excited to be doing these things. And then obviously too, if you're able to tend to your needs, this means more specifically in the sense of physical tiredness. Maybe you just need a nap. Maybe you need a coffee. Maybe you need extra water. How much water have you been drinking? Maybe you need some good fueling food. Again, take a look at the last three days. How have you been physically fueling your body? Have you been getting enough sleep? Have you been drinking enough water? Have you been eating enough nutritious foods? I know that this is redundant and like so obvious, but sometimes we just, again, get into these, these molds or get into these rhythms where we don't even realize how much we aren't drinking water or don't even realize how much we've cut our sleep short or don't realize that we haven't really ate something super healthy and really energetic in a long time. And again, just that alone, give yourself three days to just physically focus on those things and you will have so much more energy, I promise you. The last thing I wrote to myself is to be easy on yourself. This part of working through tiredness and working through low energy took me the longest to learn in my life, but it's one that I take very seriously now is almost like being being your own friend, being your own advocate, or in a lot of ways, the way that I like to look at it is like mothering yourself. As a mom now, I think about when my kids are struggling with anything, I'm never ever mad or hard on them or mean to them or push them in ways that come from 
a place of scarcity or lack or whatever. Like, you know, when you get tired and in your head, you're just like, God, you're such a lazy piece of shit. Like you would never say that to your friend. You would never say that to your kid. You would never say that to someone that you empathize with and feel for. So empathize with and feel for yourself. Align with where you're at and go easy on yourself. Be soft with yourself, not in a way where you set yourself up for failure. You wouldn't do that again with your friend or your kid. You wouldn't be so soft or so easy on them that you would steal the struggle away from them or steal the course that they're on or put them in a worse place. You would more so just create space around the way that they're feeling, hopefully motivate them, inspire them, but then also be like, you don't have to do it all. You don't have to do it by yourself or like you're doing amazing and maybe you're going to feel better tomorrow or next week. So don't worry about it. Like just do what you can. Like those are the types of things you would say to the people you love. So say it to yourself because you should, and I hope you do love yourself enough to give yourself that too, to just be easy on yourself and to like listen to your internal cues because they don't signal off for no reason you're feeling tired or getting close to burnout. And whether it's in any of those areas, physically, spiritually, mentally, or emotionally, those cues are firing off because something somewhere is trying to tell you and get your attention to, to pay attention that things are depleting in some areas and we need to pull back a little bit. We need to readjust. We need to be there and support ourselves and refuel ourselves. So just trust yourself and and treat yourself the way you would as a parent or as a friend. And you'll find that when you can bring that softness into the way that you're feeling, you'll stop fighting it. You'll stop battling yourself and you can almost align with the way you're feeling and still move through your day and do some of the things you need to do. But, but you bring that space with you. And it's so much more enjoyable to go at life that way, whether you are feeling sick, but you absolutely have a deadline at work that you have to do. So you go and you, you're doing that thing, but you're not, you're not frustrated. You're not agitated. You're not like, oh, well, you're trying to get it all done. Instead, you're just like, I'm doing the best I can. I'm doing the best I can. I'm doing the best I can. And that, that energy can radically shift the outcome of your day, the outcome of whatever it is you're trying to do. And how tired you end up continuing to feel in the days that follow. So align with where you're at. Listen to your intuitive cues. Listen to the parts of yourself that are saying like, oh, something's a little off or a little low here. And then, you know, even in the ways that you might align with yourself and be easy on yourself, you can also, I mean, whatever your love language is, like lean into that. But you can also kind of nudge yourself in the ways that you would or take care of yourself in the ways that you would a loved one or a child. So when I try to like mother myself and I'm having days like today where I'm really tired and I'm just not feeling so great, I make myself the nice hot, warm coffee and I go the extra mile to froth the milk and put on the cinnamon. And, you know, I changed out of earlier today. I was wearing kind of more tighter, nicer clothes because again, it's a filming day or it usually is. And I was like, you know, my body, my gut, everything feels off. I'm going to put on comfortable clothes and I'm going to still dress up and I'm going to dress up in a way that's comfortable and that embodies and embraces the way that I'm feeling right now. And I'm going to make myself my favorite dinner tonight. And I'm going to embrace the fact that it's a rainy day outside and play my rainy music and just let myself feel how I'm feeling and go about my day in that tune, in that note, but still take on the things that I think are of highest priority. And I moved some things off of my list today too and put them to next week on my next filming day because you know what? I'm ahead. I don't need to be doing two back to back today. I could just do one, like little things like that. I know it seems obvious, but sometimes we just need the permission and we need to hear someone else say it. So hopefully I was able to do that for you today and hopefully you won't be feeling too tired much longer. Thank you guys so much for joining me on today's coffee talk. If you have any thoughts or anything else you want to share on today's topic, please feel free to do so, but definitely leave in the comment section, some of your favorite ways to get motivated and to get inspired. And without further ado, I will chat with all of you guys in the next one. Bye everyone.